I'm going to creative service to get two mugs for some audience members who had a birthday. I was told there were no mugs, but we're a large corporation. We should have mugs. Hello, hello. Kimberly, may I have two mugs, please? See, wasn't that hard? I got mugs. Executive producer Jeff, just give them mugs that are old. No, these are fresh mugs. We love fresh mugs. We're all the open. Here we go. Have a seat. Save your energy. We have an hour. I said if I was going to do TV, because I was never not going to be myself. You're sitting next to one on the couch. So let's just say that. Be yourself, but not too much of yourself. Now, here's Jason. crowd today. Good Thursday crowd. Let me fix my tie. Got to get the tie straight. There we go. There we go. I hate, I gotta tell you, I hate skinny ties. You can never get it even. There we go. I have, I have any, there, is that even? Audience, that's even, isn't it? Yeah, there we go. That's eh, all right. Eh, it's a little crooked. Who cares? I'm a little, I'm a little, mm. Now, see, this is going to drive me nuts the whole show. Hi, everybody. I'm Jace. Let's start with this. <laughs> this is the ultimate uh, birthday for a game show fan. Now, this would be me. I would love this. Look at this. A dad in Texas recreated the set of The Price is Right in his living room to celebrate his daughter's 13th birthday. Look at this. Jeff, I want that Plinko board. Get us that Plinko yeah. board. Yeah. I'm going to call that dad to make it for us. Anyway, it includes replicas of the Plinko board, uh, the Punch-A-Bunch, and of course, look at that, the big wheel. The guy and his wife, yeah, the guy and his wife actually saw the show live for their honeymoon 15 years ago. That's sweet. So sweet. Oh, we should just do the show from their house, I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of the show, let's get started. Roll that beautiful music, Leo. Here we go. I love this song. I love this song. It's all for you, audience. It's all for you. That's right. Everybody filling in for Kendall. Give it up for Fallon, everybody. How you doing? Good. Stupid tie. Oh, I'm never wearing this tie again. I can't keep it straight. Anyway, how you doing? Good, how are you? I'm doing well. Oh, I meant to tell you, thank you. You I, uh, you were my first Christmas card of the season. Oh, yeah. I got your, uh, I got your Christmas card a couple days ago. Thank yeah. you. Thank, yeah. yeah, did you hang it up? Oh. <laughs> I, 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 uh, I don't, we don't hang up. We don't, we don't do it. We, we don't hang up the Christmas. Did you throw it away? <laughs> Did, did, I, you, did you throw the card away? I feel threatened. <laughs> I feel uh, you're very close to me Is with that. It, was it thrown in the trash? No, no right, audience? Oh, no. Okay. No, no. They said no. No. You didn't say no. no. I gotta. <laughs> excuse me, I gotta fix my mints. Oh, oh I gotta. Okay. My, I gotta readjust my mints over How here. Oh, um, dare you. No, I, 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 yeah. I kept it. It was a lovely photo. I did. I, it's on my counter. It's a lovely photo of Jake and, uh, and you. And it is. Now I know you're lying. It is not a lovely photo of me. No, audience, this is so funny. Tell them what your coworker said at the radio station. Well, I didn't do, we don't do like um, family photos for Christmas cards like a lot of people do. So we went on like the hardest hike of my life. It was like a seven mile, like complete uphill at Olympic National Park. So at the top is the beautiful view. So the photo is us super sweaty on the mountain. My daughter's like this <laughs> and I'm I'm like sweaty, my hair is like how anyway, my coworker goes, Wow, usually people get nice professional photos. You <laughs> he goes, You guys look so sweaty. <laughs> I was like, it is. Yeah. It did. We were, yeah. Yeah. 
I did kind of notice you yeah. had a, a, a glisten a glow, to you. Yeah. yeah. Because I was so proud of that hike, and I'm like, it's a beautiful view. It's like we try to go in national park every year, so. I don't do like a letter, so that just tells you we did something active once. I so, yeah. Once. <laughs> once. Yeah. Hey, yeah. by the way, a little bit later in the show, we're going to be doing holiday hot takes. Fallon and I are going to debate some hot button holiday issues. Uh, and Fallon, Fallon is warning me that we may not be friends at the end of the segment. Yeah, that, 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 yeah. I know, I'm telling you. I'm keeping this. You're keeping that, yeah. Keep that on the right. My new weapon, yeah. Hey, uh, hey, before uh, we get too far into this, I want to say uh, today, on a little personal note, today is my mother's birthday. Uh, I want to say, yeah. Happy birthday. I, uh, I want to say that uh, I love my mom very much. Uh, it is not easy. Uh, being my mother, uh, it, is, it is not for a myriad of reasons. Uh, I try my darndest to make her proud. I don't always succeed, but I love you very much. I hope you're having a great day. And uh, yeah, she's just the best. What'd she's you the get best. her? What'd what? you get her? Uh, she will find out later today, oh, okay. actually. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and I, she loves cards more than anything. I made the tragic error one time of not getting a, because cards don't mean oh. anything to me. No, no, no. I, oh. They, what? Oh, no. I just don't want to go. No. <laughs> Unbelievable. Bad timing. <laughs> Can we just end the show now? Yeah, let's just, let's get to the hot dish. Leo, quickly. Roll it. <laughs> Leo, stay on the shot. I don't like that her weapon is still in the shot. I don't like that right there. Let's get started. Tonight, tonight, we find out who will receive the final rose on the first ever Golden Bachelor. Yeah. That's not what this is about. Oh. oh. <laughs> Hold on, audience. On the same day of the finale, controversy is swirling around the Golden Bachelor himself. Oh. Gary. <laughs> Yesterday, yesterday, the Hollywood Reporter published a big O expo expose oh. on Gary with the headline, look at the headline, The Golden Bachelor's Not So Golden Past. Oh, no. So the report says that Gary or ABC stretched the truth about his career oh. and the show lied when it said he hasn't dated since his wife died 40, uh, 43 years ago. Here's no. the deal. Uh, 43 years. His wife of 43 years, thank you. First, I'm just so nervous with Fallon's weapon. Anyway, yeah, she asked me, yeah. So first the show said that Gary is a retired restaurant tour who quit working in 2006. Survey says, uh, the truth is the last time dude owned a restaurant was when Ronald Reagan was president. <laughs> Bobby Ewing was coming out of the shower. Uh, it was 1985. 1985. And he's done several jobs since then, from installing hot tubs to maintenance. He did maintenance at a mental health facility. I, uh, I mean. I, I don't know why I said hot tubs yeah, like that. Like, you said it like everyone was going to win one. I know. Hot yeah. tubs. Everybody's getting a hot tub today. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. No, no, no. No, girl, did you see the cold open? We don't even have mugs. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, so now let's talk about his love life. The article says that Gary met a woman while working as a maintenance guy and they started dating a month after his wife died. That relationship lasted three years until they broke up in 2019. She, yeah, she claims that Gary told her she was, uh, that Gary told her, quote, are you ready? You were too fat. She was too fat to take to his high school reunion after gaining 10 pounds. Girl, I gained 10 pounds last week. <laughs> the article says he dated two other women as well. I, I read this in the parking lot of a Cub Foods. I was, I was loving life. You go in, you get a pint of ice cream. You're just, just eating, eating it, it. watching, reading it, yeah. I'm just gonna repeat what I believe. I know nothing officially. But I'm just going to say this. I think our friend, Minneapolis resident Leslie Fema, may have dodged a bullet. I, oh. uh, I, I just, my prediction is, I don't know anything. I don't know anything. Yeah. I don't know anything. 
But I'm just going to say, I'm going to say if I'm laying money down, I'm going to bet $100 that Leslie is the runner-up and ABC is going to pick her for the next Bachelorette. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. That's, yep. Yeah. That makes sense. I only watched a few episodes. Like, I fell off a little bit, I'll be honest. But I always got the vibe, like, Leslie seemed a little too big city for his yes. vibe anyway. Like, so it would make uh, sense to me that she would... Yeah, but dude do does have a tiger show. tattoo, I'm just saying. He does, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah uh, I know. <laughs> okay. Next to the dish, after 40 years, Eddie Murphy returns to the movie role that really helped to make him a huge star, SNL and then that. The first image of Eddie on the set of Beverly Hills Cop 4 recently came out. Production is underway on the fourth movie called Beverly Hills Cop Axel Foley. Netflix is making the movie. Eddie was on Jimmy Kimmel last night. This is so great. And talked about what it's like making an action movie now that he's 62. Listen. They would want me to do like, like was a scene where they want me to run down these steps. <laughs> it was outside these cement steps, and after I did it, the director said, "Can you come down faster with a, more of a sense of urgency?" <laughs> and I was like, "No, I can't." <laughs> and I had to tell her, hey, "Listen, now, I know I still look like Axel Foley, but don't ask me to do nothing you won't ask Morgan Freeman to do." <laughs> he, he's still the best. Just the best. That delivery, that delivery, he's the best. Mm -hmm. He's still the best. He hasn't aged at all. Not at I all. I mean, like, he, he said, obviously, harder on the knees to go downstairs, clearly. But, yeah, yeah. like, physically, no aging. And, and really quick, you made a great re uh, uh, point in our meeting. Yeah. He's not precious anymore. Yeah. About, yeah. I, for a while, he was, like, so serious. And I'm so happy he's going back to being kind of like the Eddie Murphy we all love. Yeah. Like, not taking himself so seriously. So, he's I He's like the best. That. Yeah. The new Beverly Hills Cop movie will hit Netflix next year. We're going to go take a break. We'll be back after this. Back in a moment. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Welcome back. Former Beverly Hills Housewives star Kathy Hilton, love her, uh, is making the rounds with her daughter Paris to promote the new season of their reality show. Last night, Kathy shocked Paris. When she, when talking about her sister Kyle and the subject of tattoos came up, look at this. Tonight we saw Kyle and her friend Morgan getting tattoos. You've met Morgan Wade, right? Mm -hmm. Didn't you went to the concert and you've, wait a minute, you got a tattoo too? Mm -hmm. Oh, I love it. What? <laughs> you have a tattoo? Morgan, Kyle, and I got a tattoo. Wait, hold on. You I don't even have one. Wait, hold I on. Know. How did I miss you in the tattoo parlor? <laughs> well, because it was at my house. Oh, you got a tattoo at your house? Yes, and Kim was there, and we. she didn't want... Four-leaf clovers are my favorite thing. Okay. And so you got... Wow. And Kim was like, this is a serious... This, you, I don't want to do that. I'm like, wow. I don't. Okay. <laughs> Happy Hilton got a tattoo. <laughs> I mean, if Kathy can get a tattoo, for heaven's sake, I can. Well, Kathy says she's in a much better place with Kyle, her sister, following the drama on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills last season. And speaking of last season, fans saw Kathy Hilton clash with former housewife Lisa Renna on last season big time. Like, if you don't watch the show, just trust me. It was brutal and, and most likely led to Lisa. Mur, mur. Uh, Kathy talked about her relationship with Renna today. It was shocking. Listen to this. Surprising. Have you seen or spoken to Lisa Renna since the end of last season of Beverly Hills? Um, actually, yes. And I received the most beautiful giant flower bouquet and a beautiful card. And I called her to thank her. And we talked for about 20 minutes. Really? Yes. And all is, pe there's peace? Absolutely. There. And she's doing well, and I'm very happy for her, and I, you know, we always had such a good time. Until you didn't. Until we didn't. Yeah. <laughs> Until you didn't, yeah. You know what? I love that. Life is too darn short. And especially fighting over a ridiculous reality show. Yeah. It's, come on. I, I'm glad that they did that. I, I, I always love Kathy Hilton. Staying on the topic of Beverly Hills Housewives next up, there have been rumors for a while that my childhood crush, Nicolette Sheridan, you know, from Knott's Landing, um, was possibly joining the cast of the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills because, well, one of the reasons, she is the ex-wife of two former husbands of housewives on the show. Uh-huh. Lisa Renna and Denise Richards. Oh, yeah. Nicolette was married to, anyway, Nicolette 
Paige Matheson forever addressed the rumors on the Tamron Hall show this week. Watch. Would you do it? Say no. <laughs> I, th I think that my audience would probably rather see me do a proper show. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I will say, I think you could do both. <laughs> because Nicolette Sheridan on the Housewives franchise, I will start watching it again. Let me just tell you for that. Th thank you for that, but I, for, for she, me, she'd rather play one than be one. Be one. <laughs> the great Donna Mills. I'll say it again, heavens to Murgatroy, I want to meet the witch that Donna Mills made a deal with uh, <laughs> in a tree. Donna Mills, that is, she's 81 and oh, she wow. looks like that. Wow. Nicolette, Nicolette is, pro I know, the audience about passed out, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nicolette is promoting her Lifetime Christmas movie with Nicolette and Morgan Fairchild and my friend Linda Gray that airs Saturday night. Can't wait for that. <laughs> Next up, it's the place in Hollywood to see or be seen. Now our buddy Dax Holt is diving into the history of a Tinseltown institution. Audience, give it up for Dax Holt from the Hollywood Raw podcast. Hello. Hi, buddy. Wow, what a warm welcome. I love it. Hi, Hi. Jason. How are you? I'm well. How are you, my friend? Can't complain. Okay, talk to me. What, what, this sounds intriguing. So I don't know if you knew, but when I worked at TMZ, we had a, a location in Hollywood that was right across the street from like the Hyde Lounge. Yeah. But outside, like my desk was right here and the window that I would look out would look out at the Chateau Marmont. Mm. And for anyone who has been to Hollywood, Chateau Marmont is this like castle hotel that has been there forever. It is one of the most infamous locations in Hollywood. And uh, we had someone on this week on the podcast that knows all about it. He's a historian of the Chateau Marmont. His name is Sean Levy. He's written a book about the hotel. And so it was the perfect opportunity to bring him on because there's like this, this aura about the hotel. There's been so many like infamous things that have happened there. I mean, uh, Jim Morrison and uh, Led Zeppelin and all these things that have like happened in the hotel and we wanted to bring him on and just talk about it talk about the rumors that are true the things that are fake you know whether or not Britney Spears actually has a lifetime ban from the hotel because of one of the incidents that happened where she went to eat um, and started smearing food all over her face I mean there's so many things about this place uh, John Belushi died there. Uh, I mean, you, you could go on and on uh, about the Chateau Marmont, and so we had him on. It was a really fascinating conversation, though. It, Dax, you would know this better than most. Is it still, you know, some places come and, come and go when a new place opens. Like, I, I remember the place to be seen or the place to always see celebrities was the Four Seasons Beverly Hills Bar. I mean, I've done enough junkets. I've sat there and watched a parade. Is the Chateau still, do celebrities still go there a lot? A hundred percent. And I saw probably one of my most exciting celebrity sightings there, which was the Olsen twins. Yeah. <laughs> wait, no, wait a minute. I know no. it sounds crazy, but they're wait like a minute. elusive. I've never you heard someone put the word exciting combining with the Olsen twins. Yeah. You got to realize they're never out there. They're like... I don't know unicorns and so for them to be I saw them at down in the like the lobby and I was like oh my god it's the Olsen twins you know I've seen a lot of famous people but to see them in person was really exciting for me I Dax I love you but I mean come on they have the personality of a graham cracker I mean you know it's like I you've met a lot of great celebrities I'm not kidding I can't believe that was one of your most exciting I was so excited. Uh, but anyway, we got into like so much of this hotel. The guy that had to call 911 because he had um, a lot of diarrhea issues. I think you probably heard about that one. There's 911 tape famously from Chateau Marmont. Uh, people who have fallen off the balconies there. I mean, I could go on and on. I I'm not telling you how to do your show. I mean, you're doing well enough. It's a huge hit. But I love this. You guys should do a series of, of haunts there, uh, famous mm -hmm. Hollywood places. Again, who am I to tell you how to do your show? But I would <laughs> devour these. Well, listen, if you want to know all the crazy ins and outs of one of the most infamous hotels, this will be the episode that you want to check out. I can't wait. Thank you, buddy. Have a good week. Thank tell you. Tell the family I said hi. The great Dax Holt.
Support him. Subscribe to his podcast. It's called the Hollywood Raw Podcast. You can get it wherever your uh, podcasts are sold. Um, Miley you, Cyrus just had her birthday party there, so it is still very popular. It is? Mm -hmm. yeah. You got very excited. Well, the Olsen twins are your generation. Absolutely my generation, yes. Oh, I grew up with all of the Olsen twin movies. On VHS? I, yeah. Oh, absolutely, VHS. I watched them religiously. Like, I loved the Olsen twins. So it is sad for me that they are pretty elusive. Like, you don't see them out and about a lot. And I would be like him. I'd be like, oh, is that Mary Kate and Ashley? Like I would freak out probably. I, I yeah. get that aspect. It is. It is kind of like seeing Nessie. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like, oh, it's like the like, right. you know, because they don't come out a lot. And well, I'm not like, comparing the young no. ladies to a, a sea creature. No. I'm just saying. No. It's right. like seeing like it a is. mythical creature. Yeah, yeah. Like you see their sister all the time now, Elizabeth Olsen. But yeah. yeah. Mm. Whom I love. Yeah, she's great. More dish for you now. Get ready for more Sex in the City, uh, but not quite what you think it is. There's no Carrie Bradshaw. Instead, it's a Sex in the City inspired reality dating show. So the author of the, we, we just lost the whole audience. Anyway, uh, the author of the book who inspired the show is working on a new show following, here's the deal, they're gonna follow four women in their, four women in their 50s who date men of all types, hoping to find love. It's gonna be called is there still sex in the city? Casting is underway, uh, and the show's being... <laughs> I, I think I can already answer that. There is still sex in the city. I just, yeah. 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 The end. Spoiler. The spoiler yeah. alert. Yeah. yeah. We'll be right back. Uh, and it's, yeah. I, and by the way, it's, under, it's being shopped around. We don't know where it's going to land. With the success of The Golden Bachelor, I assume we'll see a, a lot of new shows. Because, yes, of course, people in their 50s and 60s and beyond are still dating and still doing things, you know? <laughs> what are these things you speak of? I'm just joking. You know, I, no, it is Thank fun. you for asking. It is funny how they act like uh, once you... I, I mean, I'm knocking at 50's door. Mm -hmm. And the fact that people think it's a mystery that we're still, you know... Um, um, breathing, thank you, uh, or, you know, uh, it's just, it cracks me up. I mean, the woman in the, uh, breathing, yeah, I know. I am amazed some days that I'm breathing, but, yeah. I don't know if we need this. Yeah. I, this goes into the category of, I don't know if we need this. Yeah. I like the author, Candace Bushnell, but, no. We got enough of the Sex in the City. We got the, we got the reboot, we got the original series. We do, Call yeah. it something else, but... You are right. Anytime a network sees success, they copy it. Absolutely. So now the Golden Bachelor, that's why, going back to the first story, mark my word, Leslie Fema is going to be the yeah. Golden Bachelorette. There's going to be a Golden Bachelorette show. There has to be. No, yeah. network TV, the way that it is, Disney sees the success. Because that, look, we can make fun of it. It's, it was actually... It was the hit of the season, The yeah. Golden Bachelor. Mm -hmm. And if I'm ABC, I'm in a meeting right now. Bring me every 70-year-old woman in, the, in America. <laughs> yeah. Yes. For sure. Yeah. That's right. Every single one of them. And now I'm an expert on women because, remember, I hit on three of them at Disney last weekend. That's right. I, uh, I did that little leather Tuscadero. What's up, ladies? I did oh, that. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I'm still embarrassed by that. Anyway, <laughs> let's get to know our next JVIP of the week. Today, it's Dave from International Falls, Minnesota. Dave says he loves everything about our show, but especially the life stories that we share in the beginning. Uh, fun fact, a little behind, we call that desk chat. Dave also loves uh, our friendly, my friendly band banter with Kendall and Fallon. Is it friendly? I don't know. I'm just joking. Uh, Dave, I mean, look, she has a, I mean, she has a weapon, for heaven's sake. Dave's going to get a Jason Show mug, enter to win the monthly grand prize as well. That includes being a VIP guest in our audience, a $150 gift card to Becker Furniture. We love Becker Furniture. And a $250 gift certificate to Renew Med Spa. Still to come, a new cookie to add to your holiday baking plan. Look at that. Santa's favorite elf, Stephanie Hansen, <laughs> is sharing her recipe for ginger molasses cookie plus the recipes you need to know about cookie exchanges we'll be right back Stupid tie again. There we go. From sugar to chocolate chip to gingerbread. Yuck. It wouldn't be the holiday season. I don't like gingerbread. Uh, without Christmas cookies. Here to share her take on a traditional ginger molasses cookie is the host of Taste Buds on Fox Local, the Emmy winning Stephanie Hansen. I can already 
tell we're gonna have a weird time today? <laughs> because you just said you don't like ginger cookies. No, I would, no, I, I, no, I would rather put a campfire out with my face. I, I do not, yeah, I, well, they're my like least. Well, the match, friends, because I brought you some ginger cookies. Okay. I, you know, the only thing worse than gingerbread cookies, uh, oatmeal raisin. Uh, no. No. Okay. I like an oatmeal no. raisin. No. I like oatmeal raisins, uh, the work of the devil. I don't, okay. yeah, no, 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 no. No. Here, let me just give you a little backstory. Okay. So, if you're a regular watcher, last year at holiday time, we did a cookie party special holiday episode <laughs> with Jason. Uh huh. And I do a cookie exchange. And we're going on our like 25th year yeah. with this same group of six women. Three of us are in radio, so we're all like super bossy and talk the whole time. I'm sure you can imagine. But everybody's got I like, can't imagine you no. bossy at all. Everybody's got like real feelings about this cookie exchange. Like there's rules, people get mad. One year someone had very hurt feelings. Oh, so it is a lot of drama. Okay. So can I, you record it for the show? Uh, can we just put a camera in there? I'll, yeah. I'll send you Thank a video. You. Okay. Honestly, no. So, like, d is is assembly of a cookie a cookie? So, like, peanut butter blossoms where you push the little Hershey's kiss, kiss in there? That's People a cookie. Like, well, right on that's, that's not a cookie. really a cookie. I made homemade jam. I made homemade shortbread. I press a thumbprint in. I made frosting. So, like, no. people get real up in the business. Yeah. So I started my cookie exchange life. I know this is not where you thought this segment was going to go. I, I'm thoroughly enjoying this. Okay. So I was like, oh, I'm going to make holiday breads. I have a lot of cranberry sauce left over from Thanksgiving. I'll make like little cranberry orange breads. Now look I'll how delightful. Audience, now look at this. How They'll delightful is that? Cute. Yeah, look at that. Okay. Look at and that. I put the little tags on them and yeah. I spent literally all afternoon making them. Okay. okay? So. Then they're sitting on the counter, and I'm getting ready to put them in the freezer because the exchange is Friday. Can I eat one while you're talking? Oh, yeah. Okay. And I'm gonna try. Like, I'm gonna try. Oh. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh. Continue. Okay. <laughs> and I was like, "Is this going to be good enough? Does somebody want holiday bread as a cookie exchange thing?" So then I panicked. Mm -hmm. And I had these cookie presses from Nordicware that I've never used before. So I was like, I'm going to make a ginger molasses cookie in a panic because I need to get this ready and going. So I made those. And I'm curious because your face is sort of like you're eating <laughs> something a little nasty. I hate these cookies. Uh, no, 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 no. Hold on. No, I hate the uh, gingerbread cookies, I don't like molasses. I don't even uh, enjoy that color. Uh, I'm just joking, but these are really good. Come on! I, the funny thing is, I know he would tell me if he hated them, because I, yeah. I brought like a ginger spice latte chai thing once, and he was like, I'm out! It was horrible. Okay. These? So, all right. Yep, that's really good. Okay, so they have a little orange in them, mm -hmm. a little orange rind. The recipe is on stephaniesdish.com. Maybe that's why I don't hate them. Because they're a little orangey. It's a little, there is, a, and not too much, because orange can be, but that's really, <laughs> those are real good. Now, I'm these, glad. will you um, repeat? What, okay. These so are cool. These are like, and I have a pair from my great grandma, too, that I've never used. They're called cookie stamps. Hold it still so Eric can get a shot. Okay. Eric, grab a shot of this right here. And what you do is you roll oh. <laughs> like cookie balls. Yeah. And then you roll them in sugar, and then you press down and you stamp. Now, I don't know how good my tech was. I actually have a blooper video I probably should release later um, where Pete, uh, Kurt was calling these cookie balls Pete Sweaty. Yeah. But <laughs> I... I'm not even going to ask a follow-up no, question no, to that, no, but no. yeah. And Is I it was pushing down, and they were getting stuck, and so it took me a while to kind of get the tech down. It doesn't matter. But apparently, like, I'm kind of obsessed with these, and people collect them. They're, they they're, get you real can buy. Excited. These are Nordicware, which is made in Minnesota. If you're from Chicago or Florida, hello. Yeah. <laughs> Iowa. You can order them online. But they're apparently like people pass these down, they're family heirlooms. 
So I'm pretty excited about the idea it, of the cookie press. You you should be. I'm, th those are first. The presses are great. This would actually make a really good gift for like a cookie person in your life. You know what I mean? That like a baker. Yeah. And I'm not just. I didn't just do what I just did to try to be funny. No, I have never. I have never liked a gingerbread cookie in my 49 years on Earth. That is the first gingerbread cookie oh. that I actually really enjoy. Yeah. Yeah, I enjoy that. This day is getting so much better. Now, here's a question. You brought these for the demonstration. I, I see names and stuff. Is there one for us here? Do I get to have one of those loaves? Or, yeah. Do you want to try the cranberry orange loaf? Well, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. I mean, we're doing a segment for heaven's sake, but <laughs> if you didn't really answer my question. Does that mean I can't have a whole loaf? <laughs> <laughs> we're back with Stephanie Hansen. <laughs> She has five rules for anyone taking part in one of those very dramatic cookie exchanges. <laughs> we'll be right back when we return. Back in a moment. Oh. Welcome back to our show. Thanks for being here, everyone. Hello to Iowa, Wisconsin. I see you, Madison. Well, uh, you ever been to Madison? Yes, they have we the best farmer's market in the world. Yeah. Hi, Madison. Hi, Madison. Well, every uh, Stephanie is uh, here, and uh, now we're going to do, you mentioned the dramatic cookie exchanges. <laughs> we're just going to have a little continued cookie therapy. Now, is this, are these rules, are these like a, a gizmo gremlin rules, like no, never feed them after midnight, or what? what no, what are we kind of, we have some rules about cookie exchanges that I'll share with you. Okay. I have little graphics to support oh, you. Okay, okay. I have Le stories. Leo, put up number one. Here we go. A dozen for each person. Okay, what we learned is you bring a dozen for every person, but you also bring an extra dozen because people want to eat the cookies at the exchange. So everybody brings an extra. Oh, I get it. Oh, yes. Yeah, You're right, so though. It's a party, but you also get to go home with your cookies. Okay, I think number two is going to be very important. The <laughs> cookie exchange rules, hello, they must be homemade. Okay, we've had, we've had a COVID incident. We've had a flu. We've had a death. That is the only reason that you do not homemade Somebody your died cookie. at one of your cookie exchanges? <laughs> it was a very close death. So it was like, okay, one year I had the flu and my daughter was so freaked out that I was going to go to the cookie exchange with store-bought cookies that she made meringues for me to bring. She's real sweet okay. like that. Ellie's the best. Yeah. Oh, okay, I misunderstood. I thought someone literally died at your cookie exchange. No, I was like, we did have <laughs> a passing I would never gas hold... incident, but no one died. Yeah, okay. One of our little friends had a real afternoon. Okay. Well, we're having a morning, aren't we, friends? Yeah. Let's go to rule number three. Uh, group decides rules. Crackers? Dipped pretzels? What, what? What? Okay, this has been controversial, and this is why I was freaking out about the bread when I was looking at them. Like, is a bread a cookie? Is a pretzel rod dipped in chocolate okay? No. Is a cracker that you spread toffee and chocolate on? Christmas crack? Have you heard of that? It's real tasty, but like someone got real up in the business because was that a cookie? How about a bourbon ball? One of our guests was asked not to bring her signature cookie again because nobody ever ate them. They told her her cookie, her, her ball, her bourbon ball was banned. They banned her ball? They banned it. They banned it. Yep. I, here's what I would say. Then if you're going to allow all that nonsense, you change the name. It's not a cookie exchange. It's a holiday treat exchange. Well, then I'm bringing my Irish cream, and we're just going to call it a day. Because, yeah, I mean, sure. my homemade Irish cream. The audience cream and I are down for that. Delicious. Okay, number four. Are breads candies a violation? You guys, I feel like I might need to report back. The exchange is Friday night. We'll see how it goes. Oh, are you kidding me? I want to stream live uh, on our Facebook page. I want to see you guys pulling each other's hair like Crystal and Alexis. Like, did you yeah. bring those bourbon balls again? Nobody eats them. Okay, number. No, I know who I knew who that is, but I, I ain't getting in trouble with her. Number, uh, the final one. Bring your own plates and Tupperware. Okay, that this is actually a helpful tip. Don't go to your cookie exchange and not have things to bring your cookies home. If you want to assemble them, like these cute little bags are easy to find on Amazon. Also, one thing that's kind of more in vogue, identify what the ingredients are. So, like, people have allergies. My husband can't have vanilla. 
So I come home with seven dozen what? cookies. He can't have vanilla. He's weird. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he is. He can't have vanilla. He can't have Worcestershire sauce. There's Kurt all can't have Worcestershire sauce? <laughs> Kurt is literally becoming a Jack's Pizza recluse at home. <laughs> <laughs> He's never leaving the house because he can't eat anything. Your husband yep. is becoming a Jack's Pizza <laughs> recluse? recluse? Three, pi three Jack's the, pizzas a your, week. Your, how, your, your, your husband is the Howard Hughes of frozen pizza. <laughs> Completely. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. Watch his fingernails. Yep. Just keep, yep, yep. keep those bad boys trimmed. Not, yeah. but if you trim them anywhere that I can see, you're out. Yeah, me too. Thank you. Out. Give it up for Stephanie, everybody. <laughs> Everything she talked about today, including recipes. If you want the recipe, people always do, go to her website, stephaniesdish.com. And don't forget to stream the latest episode of Stephanie's show, Taste Buds. It's available on the Fox Local app on your smart TV, or you can get it on Fire Stick, Apple TV, Android TV, or Roku. We'll be back with our holiday hot take debate. That's good, my friend. Welcome back. We all know the holiday season is here, and that comes with familiar holiday traditions. Today, we've done this once before, and you guys liked it, so we're doing another edition of uh, some of our, sh we're sharing some of our thoughts with a segment we call Holiday Hot Takes. We're going to go through a series, thank you for ooing at that. Uh, <laughs> We're going to go through a series of common traditions to say if we are yay or nay, uh, and or if we just absolutely loathe them. Okay. <laughs> you ready, Fallon? Mm hmm Here's the first one. Christmas letters that are basically family newsletters documenting every member's life over the past year. Yay or nay? Yay. Thank you, studio audience. Oh, yes. Oh, I have to give one. Uh, Fallon? I do half and half. Here's why. If it's like overly ridiculously braggy, no. But if it's just like a little quick catch up, then you know, I don't keep up with many people other than Facebook, so maybe it's okay. We didn't do a letter this, like we've never done one. But, but like we've had people that have sent us cards that tell us how much they sold in real estate that year. And I thought that was a little no. bizarre. No. <laughs> Um, not only do I not want to receive them, I... I, I <laughs> well, I, we know where you stand with Christmas cards. Okay. <laughs> Save a stamp if you're friends with Jason. That's right. <laughs> Save that. Save that. 30 cents. No. Uh, 30. How much are they? It's 60? What? Well, that is highway robbery. I'm yeah. not... No, no. Yeah. I'm not doing... No. Save yourself. I hate them. It's just, no, no, absolutely okay, yeah. not. Next up, decorating your home with giant Christmas <laughs> inflatables. Oh. Yay or nay? <laughs> I am not shocked at all by this one for you. I, no. don't, I don't have any, but I just love any form of Christmas cheer. <laughs> I, I'm not nay, but I'll say I'm... I'm picky, <laughs> shocking, I'm, I am picky on my Christmas decor. No. I am, yeah. So, no, 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 the inflatables, first of yeah. all, I have a yard, I live in a condo. That would be a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm not gonna do that to my poor neighbors. And, but even if I did, no, no. Okay. No, 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 yeah. no. Next holiday hot take, matching pajamas for the whole family to create that perfect Christmas photo. Yay! Have you done this? Oh, well, I already have mine for this year. You do? Yeah. You you already shot it? No, well, it's not like a professional photo. I have the PJs for us to wear on Christmas Eve. Is there buy-in with your husband on this? They do not care. Jake does not care. He's Last year, he split the crotch out of his by doing... <laughs> he, he had the. He had do you the, have that photo? Yeah, he's, yeah, yeah, I do. I do. I literally do. He went down on a knee to sip his spiked egg, eggnog out of the moose, and he goes, rip. It was like out of a movie, and I was like, snap, 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 snap. snap, snap, snap. snap. Yeah, yeah. I. I. No. <laughs> no, 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 I, yeah. no. The only thing I said in our meeting today, I'm not going to poo poo this because I. One day, it has to be soon because our dogs are getting old. 
Colin and I want to recreate the album cover for Captain and Tennille's Love Will Keep Us Together <laughs> with me as Tennille and Colin as Captain with our dog sitting okay, on our lap. Yeah. Um, it'll be the most heterosexual Christmas <laughs> card ever. Yeah. <laughs> Next, holiday hot take, ugly sweater parties, yay or nay? Sure, I mean, they're a little overdone at this point, right? But I'm not going to say no, live it up. I'm, yeah. I think they're fun, but I'm over it only because they're, it's now, mm -hmm. it used to be kitschy and fun. Now it's, everyone does them. Yeah. So what the novelty, the novelty that made it fun is no longer there. Yeah. I mean, look. It used to be you had to used to go to Ragstock or a vintage you store, did, yeah. and now they purposely create ugly sweaters. Yeah, and it's like no, 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 no. The purpose was to get an old ugly sweater yes. that you didn't think was ugly when you wore it the first time. You know? <laughs> okay, let's move to the workplace. Secret Santa gift exchanges no. at work. No. Yay or nay, audience? No. Oh, oh, oh. I, I haven't experienced this at work. It's never an option, so I guess <coughs> nay. I don't know. What's happening at your radio station? <laughs> Listen, we are trying to pay for eggs. The <laughs> thing prices have gone up. That's all we can afford. Um, I'm for this. This is the one I think <laughs> I course. like. Yeah, I like white elephant gifts. Yeah. I like I I think, and I like it because well, we do a version of it here. You will experience this, I uh -huh. think. But it's a we have a weird take every year. Photographer Eric. It's not really an exchange. Eric is the only one that gets gifts. But, or, <laughs> but photographer Eric gives really weird, unique gifts to all of us. Oh, and I he, know. He asked me to get permission to receive a raccoon for Christmas. <laughs> and I said no. And he followed it up with, if I want an albino raccoon. It's just a little farther of a drive in Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so be prepared. All I know is, uh, really, I know we have to go. Eric told me that he's already purchased mine, uh, and he said, "quote He had to get insurance on it." <laughs> Eric. You, we will reveal that in a couple weeks. We're gonna Can't take wait. a break. We'll be back. Back in a moment. Oh, it's one of my favorite holiday shows that we do. There we go. Time for the world's shortest segment. McDonald's is making kids from the 80s and 90s very happy today. Why, you ask? Limited edition adult Happy Meals will soon be back oh. featuring classic McNugget Buddies toys. Aww. That's right. They were first offered in the 80s. Remember them, everyone my age? Uh, yeah. You can, you, uh, you can choose from a McNugget or a Big Mac box. Each one comes with an adult toy. No, I just... No, that's not... No. <laughs> That was a Mick mistake. Yeah. Jeff, what? I'm going to download the McDonald's app like you now. <laughs> look for them starting December. Thomas, look for them starting December 11th. We'll be right back. Wow. Stay with us. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. Don't forget, forget to visit our swag store. You can find a link on our uh, social media. Okay, now uh, let me uh, tell you what's coming up tomorrow, and, and you're going to uh, not want to miss it. Uh, see what happens when Fallon and I work a shift at the Taco John's Test Kitchen. Uh, I hadn't eaten yet. No. So. Are you already giving a precursor? I'm just preparing you this yeah she's and apologizing al she's already telling you warning you of what you're getting ready to see tomorrow i was hungry i was this uh, we've been to taco john's has been a good friend of ours uh and we have gone to the test kitchen this is the third time i have rarely been so excited to bring a friend to something <laughs> you would have thought i was giving fallon a car i was yeah. like here's the test kitchen it everybody was awesome. it, was yeah, it was pretty great. it's where the tacos are born it's fantastic <laughs> yeah so that's uh, 
uh, that's coming up tomorrow. And like I said a few minutes ago, if you want to come see us uh, and be in the studio audience like these fabulous people, go to eventbrite.com and search The Jason Show. But right now, that's going to do it for us. If you're watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, you go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. And one more time, happy birthday, Mom. I love you. We'll see you tomorrow, everybody. Thanks for watching. Send help, everybody. Send help.